So, I was talking to my buddy Dave recently, uh, I told him that I'd actually be talking about this in my blog, uh, but we got into a conversation online because I pointed him to the blog saying, you know, hey, check out, you know, check out my story, here's, you know, I feel God is calling me to the city of Detroit, I'd love for you to kind of be in on that. And so we started talking naturally about the city of Detroit and ministry in the city of Detroit. And as we were talking, Dave said to me, I have no interest in any a ministry initiative that ends in the word town, uh, meaning he doesn't think that ministry is really viable in the city, uh, you know, in Midtown or Downtown or Corktown or Greektown or Mexican Town. Uh, he's not interested in any of those areas of the city. He said it's dirty Detroit or no Detroit. Uh, if if it's not about suffering. If you're not in the ghettos, you're not doing Mother Teresa style ministry, then you're not really doing viable ministry in the city of Detroit specifically. And you know, on the one hand, I wanted to be dismissive of what Dave has to say because you know, Dave lives you know, way out, uh, I want to say like 32 or 36 mile road. And if you know anything about the movie Eight Mile, uh, you know, Eight Mile is a you know the movie with Eminem and. Uh, in Detroit, Eight Mile is the dividing line, or became the dividing line after the race riots uh, of, uh, of the 60s. And all the black people live, you know, south of Eight Mile, and all the white people moved north of Eight Mile. And so the further north you are, like out in 32 Mile, 36 Mile Road, uh, you're out in the sticks in the farmland, basically as far away from black people as you could possibly be. Not that this is uh, about black versus white, um, but it's it's an area that's considered safe. It's suburbia. And so Dave's saying these kinds of things, it's from the safety of you know the suburbs or from the sticks. He's out in farmland at this point uh, with lots of acreage out in an area where people, for some people in the city, they've never even seen a tree. <laughs> so, at least outside of books or television. So he's saying these things from the safety of you know, you know, the, you know, the suburbs are out in the farmland uh, and has no real interest in the city of Detroit itself. So I want to be dismissive in that sense. But in another sense, he, he works in the city, in and around the city, uh, with people from the city. So he experiences the problems that people have in the city of Detroit pretty much every day. And so in that sense, uh, I, I want to take what he says at face value. Uh, he's also seen a lot of ministries come and go. He's seen some ministries come into the city and kind of get caught up in you know political wrangling that goes on between some of the churches and the denominations in the city of Detroit. And uh, he's seen them kind of have very minimal impact. Or he's seen uh, churches come down and they're cool for a little while because we're church in the city, we're doing this cool thing, we love the city, we go to the Tigers games, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then they fizzle out as soon as uh, people start feeling unsafe. Or, wow, we're in the city of Detroit. Uh, it's kind of dangerous here. Uh, it's, it's harder than we thought it would be. Uh, nobody wants to work with us. It's kind of very insular among the churches, that kind of thing. Uh, so he's seen all of those kind of things happen. So I, I want to take what he says at face value. What I do find troublesome is the idea that the only viable ministry to my friend is um, you know, dirty Detroit or no Detroit. Uh, you know, if you're not doing ministry in the ghetto, or ministry Mother Teresa style, surrounded by suffering, then what you're doing in the city doesn't matter. That's essentially what he's saying. And for me, that's really difficult to swallow. Personally, I've always loved to hang out in Detroit in the Arts District. Uh, I've actually, you know, because I'm, I'm a thespian, I love to act. I've actually uh, been on the stage of the Charles H. Wright Museum uh, in Midtown Detroit. Uh, I love going to the DIA. I love going to the Detroit Public Library. Those are kind of my stomping grounds. I love the slam poetry circuit there. It's, it's kind of dwindled over the years, but I've, I've loved going to slam poetry events down there and the jazz clubs. And I love all of that kind of stuff. And in those particular areas, um, there's a different kind of suffering or a different kind of spiritual poverty. When you have young professionals or young families or students who are busy, 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 a lot of people are busy or too busy for time with God, or they feel like, hey, I've gotten to where I am, I'm in my career, I'm moving up the ladder, and I've done it all on my own, what do I need God for? So it's a different kind of suffering and a different kind of spiritual poverty than people who live in the ghetto, where it's kind of like God has abandoned me, or where is God when I can't get the street lights in my city to come on, or the house next door to me got burned down, or the 
12 houses on my street are all boarded up and burned out or crack houses. It's a different kind of suffering, but I feel like all of these forms of ministry are viable. If you are ministering to someone in Midtown, it is just as viable as if you were ministering to someone in downtown or ministering to someone in the ghetto. All of these people matter to Jesus. I think that that is important uh, to communicate. Now, if you're a church in the city and all you want to do is, you know, arts stuff uh, and, and neglect the fact that there are dark parts of the city, then yeah, you're not doing your job. Uh, but when people are moving into the city individually, you know, and I'm an individual, uh, I would think that you need to be obedient to what God has called you uh, to do. If God has called you to Midtown, go to Midtown. Don't go to Midtown uh, and live in Midtown and go, well, you know, I really feel like the only viable ministry is in the ghetto. Because we think, you know, take care of the fatherless and the orphan and the widow. And, you know, those are the, the types of ministries that get the headlines. Uh, so if God has called you to Midtown and you go to the ghetto, uh, you're being disobedient, so your ministry is not viable. Or if you're called to the ghetto and you feel, ah, it's not really safe, my family, my wife, my kids, whatever, um, I'm going to go to Midtown or I'm going to go to downtown where it's, it's safer and more cultural, uh, then, then your ministry is not viable because you're also being disobedient. The point is to go where God has called you to go. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 3, uh, the, the wall is being rebuilt around the city of Jerusalem, and you have people stationed at different gates. You've got the fish gate, you've got the dung gate, you've got the sheep gate, you've got all these different gates. Uh, and to me, I kind of apply that in the sense that people are called to be in different parts of the city of Detroit. You've got people who live uh, from, from my church who live in Corktown, you have people who uh, move their family down to Midtown, you have people who live in downtown, and you have people called to different parts of the city to work in and around the city. So for me, I'm not sure exactly what part of the city God has called me to. I feel called, you know, I feel, you know, uh, most equipped to work in, in the arts district, but if God calls me elsewhere, that's where I'm going, whether it be downtown, Midtown, or the ghetto. I will go wherever God has called me to go. That's really tough saying that because I know I'm not equipped for the ghetto, but God might equip me there. Who knows? Um, either way, viable ministry is about obedient ministry. If you are doing what God has called you to do, and you're doing it where God has called you to do it, then you are in viable ministry. I don't take anything away from you, and I don't think anything should be taken away from you. So, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? What, what is God calling you to do? Uh, is God calling you to, to move your family? Is God calling you to stay put? Um, is He calling you to do something radical? I think He's calling all of us to do something radical, but you know, just tell your story. Uh, leave some comments on the blog below, or email me at calvinemore at gmail.com, or follow me on Twitter at cejohnmore. So, looking forward to hearing from you. God bless. Talk to you later. Bye. to